And I believe that Con Air is one of those films. The perfect amount of wrong has occurred. Where everybody's wrong decision somehow turns into a giant right decision. Uh... I think John Cusack is also in this movie. He refuses to talk about it. I don't think Nicolas Cage talks about it, but why would he? Because he can talk about any of his other crazy fucking movies. John Malkovich refused to do press because he had no idea what his character was really doing. But Con Air is one of those films that I think everybody in the world should see. At least once if not every year for the rest of your life, on July 14th. Which is an important day in the movie, which we won't talk about just yet. Because I need to look like Sir Nicolas Cage, and I know he hasn't been knighted by the Queen, you know how you nor die. could he be knighted by the Queen because he's not British, but in my mind he is a knight. I need long hair. I need long. I need the longest hair you can give me. That isn't dreadlocks. Come on, you mean to tell me? You mean to tell me? You are shitting me right now. Maybe this is why I never really gave a fuck about how my hair looked in this game. Because I need big hair if I'm going to be Cameron Poe of Con Air. This is, this is big ol' horse shit. Wow. This is frustrating as I'll get out. He... Fine. Fine. We can't do that. Can we do the beard? We can't do the beard, but we can't do the hair. This is some of my best work yet. <laughs> but Con Air is a film that, if you look up the history of it, it is a film that most of the people who are in it refuse to talk about, and that's the mark of a great film. Oh shit, that's what I really want. I want the scruff. We're going full scruff. We're going full, full scruff. Uh, cause that movie has Ving Rhames, John Malkovich, Danny Trejo. Holy shit. Something... Something definitely happened, and <laughs> I don't know what it is. Gosh. I got some type of very loud <laughs> alert, and I cannot tell what it is based on looking at the thing. Okay. We'll leave it at that. I need to change it to something if I have a full beard because it doesn't look right. I guess that's the closest we're going to get. But it is a film where, according to film historians, Con Air was written and rewritten every day on the that? set. So, guys would come in and just change their parts on a dime and no one corrected or fixed that and that's an amazing thing because that means if the film does any decent business it is just because it is one of those stories and one of those films that it's just because the perfect the perfect amount of wrong has happened and I believe that Con Air is one of those films the perfect amount of wrong has occurred where everybody's wrong decision somehow turns into a giant right decision. Uh, I think John Cusack is also in this movie. He refuses to talk about it. I don't think 
Nicolas Cage talks about it, but why would he? Because he can talk about any of his other crazy fucking movies. John Malkovich refused to do press because he had no idea what his character was really doing, even though he had been there the whole time. Um, I think it's more of a... He feels like it was really shitty. <laughs> and... Because he's been in some, like, dark shit that is way darker than Con Air. Holy crap. What happened here? Holy crap! What the fuck? Did this just appear out of nowhere? Love your ride, hon. Holy crap, is this somebody? Is it they left it here? This is one of those, uh, one of those called, um, mobile command centers that I've seen people buy them that I have no way of even getting close to buying it. Because I don't have a bunker and all that shit. I didn't follow all the DLC as it came out. So much detail in this game. Every time I play this game, I'm surprised at just how good it is and how it's lasted this long being that good. Um, no, I need... I know what I need. I need... Um, will we under sleeveless shirts? No. Even though this would work so much. No, I need... Uh, there we go. Nope. 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 There it is. Hit and run baseball. That's what I won. Fucking blows. That's not a. That's not a fucking prize. Looking more like Nick Cage. Okay, can I take off my hat? Where are the hats? Where are the hats so I can take this off? Hats so I can remove this hat. He never wears a hat. else doesn't wear glasses but I need glasses to see my avatar if I have to suffer in real life my avatars too all right so I need to find a bar where is a bar um, clearly a bar up oh, right next to the strip club that works as a bar so con air Conair starts with uh, a whoa explosion. Conair actually starts with almost like a commercial for the Army Rangers, the Green Berets, which I don't think are the same things. Maybe just merge those two things together for no reason. But that is what Nicolas Cage's Cameron Poe's character is. He is a Army Ranger and he is leaving service to go back home to Alabama to be with his wife. So he rolls up into a bar where she works, and I know this isn't just a bar, this is a strip club, but he rolls into this uh, bar, and he doesn't look like this. This is uh, this is Con Air Cameron Poe when he gets on the plane. But he rolls into this club, and his wife is working. I'll get a, I'll, I won't look at the strippers, just for you know all the kids out there watching. By the way, all your children can see anything they've ever wanted to see on the internet. So he goes in and talks to his wife, who is a, a bartender or a waitress, I guess. And some dudes are, like, trying to hit on his wife, even though clearly it's his wife. And he's shown up in his army, like, his dress army wear, his uh, full uniform, and talks to her. And then these guys start hassling him and his wife. Because, like, apparently they've really wanted to uh, get in on this uh, action. And he's like, hey, uh, yeah, it's my wife. You can get the fuck out of here. And she's like, oh, I thought that guy was gone. I thought we were going to be building a life together. And then they mentioned that she's pregnant. I don't know how she's pregnant with his baby, 
because if he just got back from war and she is like just pregnant like she just found out she's pregnant i'm talking like maybe last night pregnancy test confirmed by a doctor this morning so they leave and while they leave they get accosted by those same guys and i don't know if those same if they're gonna be guys around here i'm gonna have to find them gotta be people near an alleyway somewhere oh it was right by a it was right by a fence too so i can find people over here Come on, come on, where are there people? There gotta be people. This game is about destruction and mayhem. There should be people around to punch randomly. Son of a bitch. Well, anyway, um, they come out to their car. Come on. I don't want to beat up homeless. I just need to hit someone for the effect of this story. Oh. I keep finding these guys accidentally. Pretty cool. Are there people over here? I thought I heard coughing. They heard that I'm reenacting Con Air and they know what happens next. They're running. Come on. Because they go to a cost. Nick Cage, who is Cameron Poe, and his wife, who is pregnant, outside the bar. Oh, I got on the street. There should be people on the street. And while they're walking to their car, the guys come up and they're like, Oh yeah, army boy. Uh, one weird thing is they said, You're the reason we lost Vietnam, which was like, What the, what the fuck? Um, so then Cameron Poe, who's, ooh, they weren't black, and I don't want to just randomly run up and hit black dudes. Are there some white guys I can beat up for no reason? Ah, oh, perfect. Um, so they start doing shit and then he's like he's like uh, my hands are what registered weapons oh i can't actually hit anything i'm in passive mode son of a bitch wait up shit i should have realized that hold on as soon as i get out of passive mode this guy's gonna be my guy this guy represents three rednecks who've been accosting my wife my pregnant wife in the bar um, you got 12 seconds, boy, and then your world's gonna be fucked up. Give me 12 seconds, 8 seconds, 7 seconds, 6 seconds, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And his hands are lethal weapons. Boom! I can't. And while the guys are fighting, he pulls some super sweet green beret moves, and he knocks all three guys down, and in the process, one of those guys gets hits right in the nose, and he dies on the spot. Boom. Deadsville. So Nicolas Cage, the next time we see him, he's at trial. And at trial, his lawyer is like, hey man, you should really take the plea bargain, even though he didn't murder the dude. He was, you know, acting in self-defense. Um, get to here. So... He, uh, is at trial, and the judge is like, look, man, here's the deal. We can't judge you like everybody else. Um, because you are a literal killing machine, you've been trained to kill by the government, you have to be judged to a different standard because your body is a lethal weapon. So you have to go to prison for, I believe, like six years? So, he goes to prison for six years, there's a montage of him in prison. And the montage includes letters to his daughter who he's never met. And he's got this awesome accent. I'm talking, like, this is premium Nick Cage, where Nick Cage knows what he's doing in terms of accent work. Where he is from Alabama. And he's talking about, oh yeah, you know, when I see you, it's gonna be the best day of my life. Um, talking to her about school and being kind to her, her mother and being an all-around good kid and then we meet that he or we see that he has a friend in prison named Babio who is played by Bubba from Forrest Gump uh, I know the dude has a name and I know he's probably been in other things but he's he's Bubba from Forrest Gump it's unfortunate but he has become uh, Bubba for the rest of his life 
because of his decision to be in that movie and that movie's success, which is not all his fault, but it's just what's happening. So I gotta find a single plane because that's how that's a, that's how much that's pretty much the majority of the film, hence Con Air. So he's in prison, and then you find out, oh, he's getting out soon. And in fact, he's getting out on July 14th, which is important because July 14th is also his daughter's birthday, who he hasn't met. So he's very excited because he gets to meet his daughter on her birthday. He's thinking about all the birthdays that he hasn't had with her. Shit, man. I don't want a small plane. I want a decently sized plane. This has to be a prison plane, for God's sakes. So he is super stoked because he's getting out while uh, it's his daughter's birthday he gets to go back to his family I mean he never really committed a well he did, he did kill a man but he didn't want to kill him he acted in self defense and he got manslaughter which is you know a bunch of horse shit there's not a single large plane anywhere near here thinking they must have been taken by all the other guys so he goes to get on the plane. He has to get transported. And while he's getting transported, we meet other characters. And the most important character we meet is, a, is John Cusack's character, uh, Vince Larkin, who is a U.S. Marshal. But for some odd reason, he also is extremely tied to the plane. I don't know if the plane was his idea. I don't know if, like, I don't know why I drove over here. I don't think they have any planes over here. You wouldn't be able to get them out of here anywhere. Good job, nasty legend. Um, good for you. So even though this plane looks a lot more like a plane in the middle of this story that we'll talk about in a bit, um, we get introduced to uh, John Cusack's character, and he was worried about the plane. Um... And they mention, like, this is a super high-tech plane. This plane is, like, the absolute best way to transport all types of criminals. And we have a bunch of criminals that we're transporting today. And they're, you know, they're pretty high, high-profile criminals. Um, one of them is Cyrus the Virus, played by John Malkovich, who is basically a domestic terrorist who... He's, his big claim to fame is he's killed more people than cancer. He's a really bad dude. Um, then we also have Ving Rhames' character, Diamond Dog, who is uh, also basically a domestic terrorist, uh, kind of a Black Panther type dude. He um, he like bombed the NRA. He's he's done a bunch of bad bad news. We also meet Billy Bedlam, who they say he's one of the worst of the worst, but he caught his girlfriend in bed with another man and he killed both of them. And I think. He, like, chopped him up or something. I don't remember the exact wording. Uh, but they're all getting on the plane, and then you see that... Uh, baby O, who is basically Bubba, and Nicolas Cage are also getting on the plane. And while they get on the plane, you know, there's whatever. Nothing too big. One of the prison guards sees that he has a picture on him of his daughter, and he's like, what's this? He's like, that's my daughter. And he's like, oh, well, we can't take it on the plane. He's like, just to let you know, I'll be getting that back. And then the guy's like, are you threatening me? He's like, nope, just letting you know what's going on. And he makes friends with the female guard, Bishop, because she realizes, like, oh, he's on his way home. He's uh, excited to be back in the land of civilians and whatnot. And they get on the plane, and they start moving, and you find out that there is a DEA agent being put on in secret. And his purpose is to get information out of this one real bad dude named Sindino. Because Sindino is like this real bad, almost Pablo Escobar type dude. And he is um, being transported to the FBI to give up all the info. So the DEA wants to get as much info out of him before he gets the FBI, because for some odd reason, they just really hate the FBI. I don't know. Uh, it seems like a dumb reason to um, put someone's life in danger, but that's what we're doing here. Uh, when they set him up to get on the plane and give him the backstory and whatever, they talk about him getting his gun. 
And he's like, there's no guns on the plane. It's just like prison. Prisons don't have guns either. Because if they get a gun off the guard, then you got a prisoner with a gun. And that's nobody's, you know, ideal situation. So they said, fine, no guns. They get him in. And when they're getting him in, uh, his boss, the DEA's boss, finds a finds a moment to pretend to check him and then puts a gun in his uh, his sock. So they get on the plane and they take off and they're flying. They're flying, they're flying, they're flying. And then it turns out another guy on there named Pinball, his nickname's Pinball, played by Dave Chappelle, doing amazing work. He pulls something out of his uh, body by regurgitating it. And the guy next to him is like, what the fuck is this about? And he goes, hey man, I'm sorry about this. And he sport spurts stuff all over him and then lights him on fire. When he lights him on fire, they have to open up certain compartments to get to the fire extinguisher. And when they open up those compartments, these real bad, real bad dudes get out of their cells, their little things. And when they get out, uh, one of them uh, grabs the one of the guards. They knock down the other one. There's anarchy in the plane. And then it cuts to the f pilots who look at each other and they go, well, we got to get back there. There's one gun on this plane, and we got it. So they pull out the, the gun, and they go to go back there, and Cyrus the Virus, played by John Malkovich, strips it of them and gets it to them and shoots him dead. And then Cyrus the Virus gets on the other pilot and says, tell them there's a mild disturbance and everything's okay, and we'll be back in contact with them soon. And when they do, he gets on the intercom and he says, welcome to Con Air. And that's, you know, the title of the movie. Everybody's super excited. Uh... And during the, uh, scuffle... Oh, wow, there's gold down there. Should I try and go for it? Did I try and go for it, dudes? Oh, man. This would be fun just to fuck with them. But then I do lose my... Oh, shit. He's got one of those. Oh, man. Should I troll this dude? No. He's living his life. He's out there getting that gold, doing him. While they're on the plane, the DEA guy, he gets a little nervous, and he pulls the gun out of his uh, thing once he gets released and holds Pinball hostage. And he's like, what the... And they're like, what the fuck is this? And he's like, guys, I'm DEA. Do you know what that means? And Pinball's like, yeah, you're the most crooked... I believe he says N-word in here. And... There's some, you know, choice language, but it, it turns into a standoff. And Nicolas Cage is like, hey, man, you don't want to do this. Like, think about what you're doing. This is not a good situation. And the guy tries to be a big man, big bully. And he ends up getting killed. And now Nicolas Cage is on there alone as the one good guy amongst a bunch of criminals. And he's earned the trust of Cyrus the Virus because Cyrus the Virus saw that he was trying to de-escalate that situation and gave him an opening to kill him and with that bit of trust Nicolas Cage goes to him to try and figure out where they're going finds out that Larkin believes that there's something wrong and tries to get a hold of him and he says and there's a little standoff and they ask where are we going with my plane and he's like well you're lying about who you are he's like you're lying to me. basically the conversation isn't important. What they, what we know is that Cyrus the Virus uh, lies to Vince Larkin. So, Nicolas Cage needs to tell them where they're headed, which is a small airbase in the middle of nowhere, out in the desert. And they go there because uh, they're going to pick up another plane to get them to... Oh, wait, I forgot about a whole other thing. That's right, we need to get back up in the air. Can you get this thing up in the air? Do I have enough room? Do I have enough room? No, I do not. Fuck. Okay, so this plane's done. Okay, well, that's actually appropriate for the sign. Sandy Shores Airfield. Sometimes your plane ends up like this. I'll get in this other plane. What time am I at? 8.30. Only 30 minutes. 
This is good, because we needed a bigger plane. Now these guys have the plane. And... Obviously Cyrus has some sort of plan here, so they ask him, what's going on? And he's like, well, we're going to land at our next de uh, destination as planned. And I said, why? That's where the law's going to be. They're literally picking up and dropping off other uh, passengers. As it turns out, they need to pick up... Uh, that's actually where they're picking up Sindino, who they need to get the information from. And uh, they need to drop off some other guys. There's a whole bit of drama about who they're going to end up dropping off because they accidentally killed a bunch of the dudes that they were supposed to drop off, so they had to make the guards look like those dudes. The other thing, um, they're picking up a very, very interesting person. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, we're going to drop this guy down, we're going to drop him down right here, right here. Oh no, there's no way, there is no way I have enough room. Oh my god. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. oh, wow. I love how the planes just showed up after I already landed in the event that I'd run right into them. Oh, do I have enough room? Do I have enough room? This is actually per- this plane is perfect for the second landing that they do, but I don't have time or hope that it'll work. I need to be able to turn this thing around. So when they land in the first spot, there's this tense situation because they have to do a couple things. The convicts have to get the transponder, which is what's used to... Am I even... That's why. It's because I forgot. This thing doesn't work like a car. I have to use different buttons. I was just going back and forth in the same position. But they have to do a couple things, these convicts, and they're working together... Oh, shit. I broke the windshield. They're working together to make this thing work. So what they do, they have to get the they have to get passengers off that represent the convicts that are leaving, and then they have to bring new passengers on, including Sandino, who is funding this idea, this escape. And while they do that, Dave Chappelle has to take the transponder off of the plane that they're in and put it on something else, so that when they get wind that something has gone wrong, they'll be chasing the wrong plane. So Pinball, who is uh, Dave Chappelle, does that. They're doing the things, they're doing the things, and then they notice that they get a guy on the plane who is dressed like Hannibal Lecter. It is played by, uh, what's his name? Wow, how did I forget his name? He's been in a little bit of everything. He was the Crazy Eyes and Mr. Deeds, which is not his best credit. Um, he was Donnie in Big Lebowski. He was, uh, the main antagonist in Monsters, Inc. He was... He's the lead in Boardwalk Empire. He, uh, uh... He used to be a firefighter. He was also in Armageddon. Uh, what is his name? What is his name? It is gonna drive me absolutely insane if I don't figure out this dude's name, and I don't want any help, because I should know it. Oh my god, what's his name? What's his name? What's his name? gonna come to me at the absolute worst time. Uh, I, I know it's, his character's name is Garland Green, and the reason he's in all that get-up is because he's a insane serial killer who his reputation precedes him by every single person who gets on the thing. Steve Buscemi, son of a bitch. So Steve Buscemi gets on the plane, and now they're like, well, we have this guy, who is uh, scarier than all of us combined, because he's done crazy, crazy shit, and not out of, like, passion, but out of a compulsive need to murder. And then, uh, um, a little bit of drama, because then they see that one of the guys that they took off the plane is actually a cop, because I believe Cameron Poe uh, put his, the recorder of the DEA agent inside, and uh, when they were moving him, 
they smashed it and it came out so they knew something was wrong and they opened it and realized oh shit that's the cop so then there's a little bit of drama and they said to hold up the plane until Cyrus noticed that there was a problem and then they start going and when they start going Pinball who's chatting up this pretty young thing over on the plane he sees that they're going and he's like holy shit that's my plane and he actually is seen by the guy that set him on fire and it looks like he fell and fell under the wheels and that was it so they're back up in the sky but they know something's wrong but the transponder is on a sightseeing plane and now they're chasing that so what we have here is oh man the villains are going to win, but Cameron Poe's on board, and he's working for the good guys. So Larkin gets on the radio and knows that he's talking to criminals, and he's like, what's going on here, Cyrus? Where are you going with my plane? And there's a little repartee back and forth because they, they're lying to each other, and I'm going to make it under this bridge because I'm feeling, you know what? I'm feeling the need for speed. Doesn't make any sense. And under the bridge. So, uh, they're flying around, and Poe, who's gained a little bit of trust with them, even though Billy Bedlam has, you know, his reservations, because the, uh, sorry, I'm going to bring out the feet a little bit there, Cameron Poe's uh, backstory is a little bit fishy to him, and they have a little back and forth, which is great. You have to see this movie. It's way better than I'm describing. Uh, I try to watch it at least once a year. It's so much fun. Uh, and after the repartee between John Cusack and John Malkovich, he says to... Uh, what's his name? He says to Nicolas Cage's character, Cameron Poe, Hey, um, we're going to Lerner Airfield. It's in the middle of nowhere. The law won't be able to get there anytime soon. So that's where we're headed. That's all you need to know. And during all this, Billy Bedlam finds out that their stuff is actually underneath the plane and they can go into it. So he goes in and he starts looking for people's stuff. And we notice that he's looking through Cameron Poe's stuff where he can find out that he's actually leaving. He's, he's going back home. He's a free man, so there's no reason for him to be on this plane. So there must be other things, and he gets upset. Billy Bedlam, as we know, he's a he's a criminal of passion. He uh, murdered his wife and her lover in their bed. He's not a nice guy. So he it's a great scene, and I'm only going over it because it has my favorite line of the entire thing. So they're in the plane, and they're in the undercarriage. Whoa, got a little too squirrely there. A little too squirrely. Uh, they're in the undercarriage. And while they're in the undercarriage, uh, he sees that Billy is looking at his stuff and he has his hand on the bunny that he got for his daughter, of which I, I guess there's a store in prison. And while he's looking at the letter and reading it, which is the letter explaining on July 14th he's going to see his daughter, uh, he, he has the bunny in his hand and Cameron Poe says, put the bunny in the box. And Billy Bedlam gets upset, like, just stares him down, and uh, Nicholas Cage repeats, put the bunny back in the box. And then they fight, and you think it's like, oh man, this is going to be epic, but then you realize they're in, like, four foot of space, so this entire fight has to occur um, in, like, a hobbit hole, but they're adults. So it's not really that great of a fight, and it turns out Nicholas Cage just straight murders him. Just murders him, and... Uh, um, I don't know exactly when. I guess before that, Nicolas Cage went down with uh, Diamond Dog because one of the wheels wasn't coming up because it was stuck down because... Dave Chappelle's body. Holy shit, I am not going to make it out of that one. Oh, need to pay attention. The wheels were stuck down because Dave Chappelle's body was stuck in the wheels. So they go down, Diamond Dog and Nicolas Cage, and they take him out. But when they do, Nicolas Cage writes on his body the location of where the plane's going to go and Larkin's name. So Larkin will be there, and that's that tips him off. But then after that is when they do the whole... 
mano a mano in the downstairs. And after that, Nicholas Cage comes up and he looks at his hands like how a man would after he murdered another man, uh, if he has any empathy towards the human race. And Steve Buscemi is now out of his cage. You know, he's walking around, he's chilling. And he looks over at Nicolas Cage and he says, two men went down, but only one man went up. And he knows, oh, Nicolas Cage murdered that guy and he doesn't know why. And he gives this weird monologue about killing and, and, and like guys who did it for fun and, and people who do it out of a need to do it and who are artists and stuff. It's really chilling. Steve Buscemi kills it. Even though like, I, I'm not even sure he knows what it was about. So they uh, come down to this uh, new airfield, Lerner Airfield, and uh, they come in. Oh, there's another plane. That's good. So they come into the airfield, right? And um, when they do, they basically have like a little mini party and when they do they actually crash the they crash the plane into like a dune which I want to uh, attempt to do but I'm pretty sure I'd lose the plane um shit 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 and meanwhile all this is going on Cusack looks at Cyrus the Virus's uh what's it called his uh his cell where he came from and he finds like all these plans about the plane and he finds these uh, letters um, from like Sandino's family to hatch this plan and then when you get to Lerner Airfield you find out the plan is they're going to get a different plane and go to a non-extradition country through the help of Sandino who's paying for all this shit so they're waiting for the plane and Sandino's like oh have patience have patience and all the while, Nicolas Cage, the real reason he stayed on this plane, I haven't mentioned, his buddy, uh, Babio, has, uh, diabetes. And all of his insulin got broken up in one of the many skirmishes on this plane. So he's staying with him to keep him alive, also staying with Bishop, his new female guard friend, to make sure he, she's not raped by, uh, Danny Trejo's character, who is a rapist in this story. And, um, um, his claim to fame, his name's like Johnny24, or 23? Johnny 23 and um he's uh his claim to fame is he got he gets a tattoo for every time he rapes someone which is 23 yeah I mean c kind of a weird brag and kind of gross and it's weird that Danny Trejo is like yeah I want to be a rapist like a just a, 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 a out, out and out rapist who just says to people yeah I'm a famous rapist and he uh, made it clear that he'll probably rape Bishop if she's not watched. And even uh, John Malkovich said he'll throw him out of the plane. And everyone's kind of been like, yeah, you're going to keep your shit in your pants. So the guys start running off to go look for shit. The, there's one gay character whose name Sally Can't Dance. That's the nickname. She ends up, uh, uh, you know, finding he. It's a he, but it, she acts like a woman. I, in today's times where you, um, you know, pronouns and things are important, I think Sally Can't Dance would probably identify as a woman, but I don't want to, I don't want to say that for them. I, I, I just imagine that is the case. So, uh, while they're all looking around for stuff, Nicolas Cage is looking for insulin because Nicolas Cage wants to save his friend Babyo, and he finds, uh another plane but this plane can't fit all the guys it could probably fit a couple guys like just Sandino so it seems like he's tricked all these guys right and Nicolas Cage and John Cusack because John Cusack showed up they fight all these dudes and then they have a standoff and they have a standoff next to the plane and they're looking at each other and he's like Cameron Poe I knew you weren't a bad guy I read your file I cut talked to your wife and he's like um, you gotta understand, I couldn't leave a man behind. It's really a tense scene, especially because it's a tense scene, and then Nicolas Cage talks, and then you feel like this is ridiculous, but it's so much fun. And then he's like, well, what are you gonna do? And he's like, what do you think I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go save the fucking day. And he puts down his gun and walks off in his tank top, his dirty-ass tank top. And, um, he says that backup will be in... And sure enough, Danny Trejo alerts them because he goes up to the tower. Can I get into this tower? Because that'd be perfect. 
And this airfield is way different uh, than Lerner Airfield because there's also just like a boneyard of cars next to it. It's also close enough to a... Uh, I can't get into it. Can I get on top of it? That's a question. Oh, is there a way on top of this bad boy? There might be. Oh, shit talky. So, um, Danny Trejo's like, we got company, we got company, and then Diamond Dog and John Malkovich, using their amazing tracking skills and their ability to eye things, they see the cops coming and is like, oh, we got, uh, 45 minutes, or like 20 minutes top, 30 minutes tops or something. So then they get to work and they're like, uh, we need to get out of here. Cops are on the way. We need to get your guys. And then Sedino is running towards a running towards the plane he knows is there for him. So they run towards the plane and he tries to get in it and take off. And in the process of taking it off, taking off with the plane, John Cusack actually breaks the tail wing and it lands in a gas station. And Cyrus is not too pleased because he's realized, oh, he's been double-crossed. Sandino was trying to get out there on his own. So what he does is he... the Also, the plane is completely covered in gasoline. And... Um... He ha he's next to Swamp Thing, played by, uh... A guy's name I should remember, because I shouldn't open up with named something and then not actually say it, but I don't remember his name. It's not Cole Meany, because that's the asshole DEA boss. Um, guess it's not important. But he takes the cigarette out of Swamp Thing's mouth, and the guy goes, Sigh, because his name's Cyrus. And John uh, Malkovich ends it with Anara, and blows up his plane, and it turns like big old hell hellfire. It's crazy insane. Uh, and then he's like, okay, so we only have a couple minutes. Here's what we need to do. We need to dig this plane out of the dirt, and we need to... Oh, shit, really? Come on, guys, are you serious? I just blew up a plane. There was nobody in it. This game... This game is ridiculous. So, they have to do a bunch of things. They have to get the plane out, and then they have to set up a trap. Oh, this is perfect. What am I doing? Get the fuck out of here. So the trap is, we trap the cops in the boneyard... And then we just start murdering the fuck out of them. This is a fireworks launcher. This isn't going to work. So there's explosions. Imagine there's like tons of people. So there's tons of people. There, there's, there's like crazy action scene. There's tons of people dying. There's also... Uh, there's also... Uh, uh, Nicholas Cage, oh, you guys, guys, you, you, you parked in front of my thing. There's no way I'm going to make it out of here. There's no way. Anyway, so there's a huge ac action scene. It's awesome. You should watch it. You should watch the whole movie. I'm going to die. Oh, 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 oh. If I make this work, oh, 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 oh my gosh, oh my gosh, do it, do it, do it, do it, Lars. Oh damn. So as they're as they're like under fire and they've killed a whole bunch of people, they take off. And uh, they're like, oh my gosh, where are they gonna end up? We have no idea. And they barely got out of there. There's a whole subplot about Steve Buscemi and a child. I'm not going to go over it because it's kind of weird, but it's also a really good part of the movie. Because you're not 100% sure what the message is. Uh, I want to stay in their sights, though, because I probably won't. Um, what is the most like Vegas? Oh, the casino. See, I answered my own question. So they're flying, right? They're flying. They're flying high above the world. Never thought I could be so free. That is the song from Starvin' Marvin in Space. So they're flying, right? They're flying. They're flying away. They're trying real hard. Oh, buddy. I'm just trying to keep them in my sights, and I've already lost them. Seems... It seems like it'd be easy for them to catch up to me. Okay. So... That's really the big... One of the big climaxes of the film. Oh, wait. I can just fly over the prison. I'm sure I'll catch them there. This is where I will do pretty much all of 
Shawshank Redemption if I ever do that movie. <laughs> I'm going to try and do the entire thing in the prison and I'm sure die like 500 times, but that's what I'm going to do. So they try to get it up and it's not working. The plane is just like almost beyond repair. And Nicolas Cage is like to Swamp Thing. What are we going to do here? And while they're flying away, Cyrus finds out that Billy Bedlam has died. And he's like, huh, there is a problem here. Uh, someone alerted them to our where we were, and someone has killed Billy Bedlam, and there's some, there has to be some type of, you know, guy working against us here. It's the only thing that makes sense. So I'm going to kill Bishop unless someone tells me what's happening. And Nicolas Cage, you know, he can't, he can't have that. So there's a, there's a fight in the, in the, in the plane. There's this huge effort to bring the plane down and it gets shot at a bunch. And then Cameron Poe gets control of the plane and, and gets on the radio. And it's like, I have control of the plane. Just chill out. We're going to land this thing. We're going to get everything under control. And sure enough, uh, he actually talks to Swamp Thing, and he's like, here's the problem. We don't have enough... One of our engines is out, and we don't have a, enough fuel to get us anywhere near a uh, airport, including the one they just left, which makes no sense. So we're going to have to land this thing. And where are we going to land it? Well, the only place we can land it, the Vegas Strip. And I know what you're thinking. Hey, isn't there, like, a ton of land outside the Vegas Strip they could have land on? Yeah, but they can't get there. So this plane is going down the strip, and it lands right in the Hard Rock Cafe, a lot like this. Holy shit! Now, when they did it, though, the plane didn't explode. Uh, it landed inside the casino, and they're like, holy shit, that was crazy! They're like, yeah, dude, it was crazy. Um, and then the cops, you know, they get there, and... Oh, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Why is that guy firing at me? What did I do? Fuck. Did he snipe me? I'm pretty sure I died on my own. I need to put on passive mode again. Fucking people. I can't even play a game without other people trying to ruin it. So in this, uh, in this casino, oh, there's the cops. In this casino, uh, you know, they try to get all the guys to the best of their ability. And they're pulling, they're like picking off guys one by one. But they notice that Diamond Dog, uh, see, I wish I had my motorcycle. I couldn't get my motorcycle. Then I have the, I run the danger of it being destroyed while I try to do this. Um, somebody with a motorcycle I can steal just so I don't have to risk my own motorcycle and I have to pay to get it fixed. It's chaos down here. All you hear is gunshots and then you see people have died. Hold on, fine. We'll get my motorcycle. I completely forgot about my brake, but it's kind of a whatever at this point. I think it's going to hurt a little bit regardless, so just hammer on through. Where are you? There it is. So, the uh, villains, the main villains of the piece... They're seen getting out on a fire truck, and Cameron Poe sees it, and he goes, mm-mm, not today. That's not happening on my watch. And he finds a police motorcycle, and so does John Cusack. So they both get on it, and they're like, let's go get these motherfuckers. So they get... Oh, shit. Wow. So that's not on me. That's on the police. So they get on the motorcycles and they start chasing after him. And they start chasing after him through the streets. And, oh my gosh, I hope I can find a fire truck. I probably won't be able to on the streets. 
but they're on the streets of Las Vegas, and they're swerving in and out of traffic, and they're doing some crazy shit, right? And they're chasing after this fire truck. Can I create a fire? Do I have Molotovs? I don't. Fuck. I don't want to talk to you, Tony Prince. So they're going back and forth. They're going, they're going, they're going. And eventually, there's a, uh, they get to a tunnel where Nicolas Cage gets on the fire truck and he fights Cyrus on the top of the fire truck. And then uh, John Cusack does the same thing. And he puts water into the cab of the fire truck so the guy can't see. So the fire truck's going all over the place. I need to get to a... Oh my gosh, I need to get to a... I need to get to a place of construction. Where's your place of construction? Um... But they're chasing this fire truck. Ooh, that is close. That is close. I know that there is a big building that's always under construction. That's kind of where I need to go. Because they chase this get they chase these dudes all over the joint, right? And eventually they get the um fire truck to essentially um crash diamond dog is on the um ooh, buddy i have no idea where it is kind of just driving around around now which is good because i'm finishing this movie a lot faster than i probably should and um maybe that's for the best I don't feel my storytelling abilities are uh, on point today, um, which is kind of, I mean, that that's on me, of course, but it's a bummer because the movie deserves more. Uh, Con Air deserves your time and attention. 110%. Uh, in the ending of it, uh, John Malkovich dies like three times. He's in a car accident for the first time. He gets thrown from the car into a, a train, not a train yard, a construction site where all the equipment is still on, and then his face gets slammed by a smasher, which I don't know what that, the purpose of that was at the construction site, but his uh, face gets smashed. Um, and then Nicolas Cage has his moment with his daughter, who, by the way, he's covered in blood, he looks insane. And then he gives his daughter uh, a toy that he fishes out of the sewer before going into the drain. And he gives it to her, and she's like, Hi, crazy person. He's like, Hi, I'm your daddy. And then she gives him a hug, and that song plays, How do I live without you? I want to know. How do I breathe without you? And I kind of think, like, there's a... What the hell is that about? Oh, that's pretty clever. I like that. I've never noticed that before. Ha, ah, here we go. So, Malkovich gets thrown. He lands in a smasher, then the thing smashes his head, and that's how he dies. And then Nicolas Cage is out on the street with his wife and daughter, and the music swells, and it's over. But the end of the movie, Sweet Home Alabama plays, and... Uh, Steve Buscemi is in a casino and in that casino he's laying down some bets and it looks like he's getting away scot-free even though he by all accounts is the worst person that was on the plane that's Con Air it's a great film uh, I've said it before I think everyone needs to see it at least once see now two construction sites now I am just I am just a bounty of construction sites when I couldn't find one when I needed to end the story. But here they are. So Con Air, a film everybody should see, especially on July 14th, because it's, uh, I'm seeing my daddy for the first time ever on July 14th. July 14th is my birthday. But yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great film. Lots of great actors just doing absolutely insane work. And... Oh, shit. I did not... For, sir? 
how am I able to tell this vehicle from the road going at breakneck speeds? Oh, wow. Wow. What an idiot. Oh what an idiot. That guy's an idiot, right? Oh, is he gonna pull out a gun and shoot me? That wasn't his personal vehicle. Yeah, now he's gonna try and kill me because he's an idiot who, who landed in front of me and thought I wasn't gonna try and kill him. And now I gotta get away. I gotta get away. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Oh, con air. But con air is one of those bad movies where... Like, the time just flies by. Because so much happens and you just get so wrapped up in it, you don't even care about how bad it is. And so many terrible decisions were made that you can't believe, but you're so happy they made them. <laughs>